Well, hello everyone, and welcome to something that is a little bit different from last time. Uh, coming out real soon is the expansion Kobolds and Catacombs, which will be out December 7th, so this week. And finally, we've seen all the cards, and I gotta say, I'm really excited to be playing, uh, to, uh, start playing a new expansion, seeing how things change, and, uh, Hopefully for the better, because Hearthstone has been a little bit bad recently. And there are tons of people out there doing massive predictions and card reviews and all of this stuff. And I'm not interested in doing that. I'm not interested in a long video. I want to try and make shorter videos. And so, I'm not interested in predicting the meta. I'm not interested in predicting anything that will be happening in Hearthstone with the new expansion. The only thing I am interested in is talking about the three legendaries I am most looking forward to playing with in the new expansion that I will be building bad decks around that will probably be not remotely meta. But hey, I'm uh, looking forward to actually having some fun. That's always good, right? Alright, so with that being said, the music has died down. Let's change back. Just using the in-app for some music. Maybe. There it is. Alright, so number three, the third one of the legendaries I am most looking forward to is Dragon Caller Alana. I have always been a fan of Mage, and I have been for the longest time a fan of Dragons. And now we have the, something that kind of just combines the two and rewards you for playing big spells and kind of crazy spells, possibly. So Dragon Caller Alana is a battle cry, nine cost minion with three attack, three health, and summons a 5-5 five, five for each well, 5-5 five, five Dragon, for each spell that you've cast this game that costs 5 or more. I really like this for a whole bunch of reasons. One, it is Dragon Fireproof. Yes, one of the best AoE clears in the game. Can't do anything really to this. Well, it can kill Alana, which, don't get me wrong, that kind of sucks. But you're only killing the 3-3 three, three, and you're not killing any of the 5-5 five, five Dragons. And between Deck of Wonders, uh, which, don't get me wrong, it's random and could end up totally messing you over, or it could go really, really good. And a little randomness is actually a fun thing about digital card games that I couldn't play so much when I was playing physical card games. So for each one of these, we also get, wait for it, wait for it, one of these guys, yeah, what a cute little 5-5 five, five dragon for 5. It is a potential that you get Psychic Screamed or something like that, or maybe they can clear it, but it is a lot of work and it is a big threat. And in general, I just love the card art uh, for this. I like, it's very obviously something that seems Game of Thrones and I like Game of Thrones, I like dragons, I like big spells, so this uh, big spell mage is definitely something I will be trying a lot of. I can't wait. Uh, this is one that's really exciting. Let me just flip these out, and next legendary, Sonia Shadow Dancer. First of all, this was one of the things in the reveal schedule that when I saw it I'm like I'm gonna love this card and it turns out I absolutely do love this card matter of fact I should mention all three of these are going to be I am crafting these all in gold uh, I just love these three legendaries that I'm gonna talk about I really like this because and not even I don't even intend to play this in quest rogue I intend to use this more with 
uh, jades as well as, and I know a lot of people have bad reaction when you talk about jades, but this card is kind of interesting and strategic. When do you throw it down? When do you start playing it out? Uh, when do you start using it? Uh, so you have to be a little thoughtful about when you actually play this card. And the other thing I particularly like about this card as well is that there are a lot of potential applications. You could use Bile Spine Slayers, or you could use um, Shadow Casters if you want even more copies of stuff. Or you could do, like, you can just basically kill off a minion and have it return right back to your hand as a 1-1 one, one that costs 1, and if it's a battle cry effect or if it's anything that's helpful, then it feels pretty good. And there are ways to even get this card back with things like Shadow Step, and then you keep this minion safe. So I think this is a really cool card to play around with, and especially with Rogue Secrets, finally. Uh, I'm actually very, very excited to start playing some Rogue, and this is one of the cards that's going to help me definitely get into it. And now the last Legendary that I am ever so excited about. This is the one that when I saw it, I'm like, yes, this was made for me. Because I've always been a fan of playing Shaman cards, and particularly this card looks just awesome with some of the things you could potentially do with it. Grumble World Shaker. Cool name, cool artwork. This is the first card I am crafting in gold, 100%. So first of all, it's a 6 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, and I didn't talk about the stats of Shadow Dancer because I don't really care. Um, this on the other hand, 6 mana, 7-7 seven, seven is pretty good stats. It has the elemental tag. Uh, you can play this pretty much at any point um, with any board and get, well, unless you have no board, in which case you won't get much, of, you won't get anything. But the battle cry of this, return your other minions to your hand, they cost one. There are so many potential things that I want to do, like I assume I would like to I would like to just have the dream go off where you have a uh, murmuring elemental into Kalamos and then you hit your opponent two times for six damage apiece. Then you world shaker it back to your hand. Murmuring elemental, Kalamos, Kalamos. That's kind of the dream. That's 24 damage in a turn easily. And it's assuming that you can't do more damage. Uh, like, it's a lot of damage all at once. Or you can... This is basically like a board shadow step, and then your minions only cost one. So things like uh, fire elementals and... The potential uses of this card actually have me really excited. I think you can do a lot of different things with it. It doesn't have to be played on turn six. It could actually be played later. And... In the past, I had some good uh, experiences. Now, is Elemental Shaman going to be a tiered 1 deck because of this? No, no, probably not. But this is very, very exciting to think about how this card could be used. And I really am excited to actually try it because I love Elemental Shaman. I like cards working together. When I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Gladiator Beasts were one of my favorite deck archetypes, where it's like, you know, you attack, and then this minion summons out another, a different minion, and that minion gets a boost from its friend. And I like this idea of cards working together more than just separate things. Um, which is weird, because I've never been that crazy into the combos in Rogue, but maybe it's just because I haven't played enough Rogue. So those are the cards that I am, the three legendaries I am the most excited about of anything in the set. But with that being said, um, there are some other cards I want to talk about really quickly, and they are in my favorite class, which is Shaman. So, And there are cards that I think other people have said are either undervaluing or 
you know, maybe they're just not thinking creatively enough. So one of the decks I like to run is Overload with the Snow Fury Giants. Um, it's definitely not the greatest deck yet, but I'm hoping this will actually give it a little bit of a boost, especially because there are some. There's a new Overload spell that deals eight damage and causes three Overload, and that might be a little bit more of what this needs. So a lesser set. Sapphire Spellstone. Now, first of all, I think Spellstones are really, really cool cards in that, um, you know, if you can get the uh, their effect to trigger, then it can be really useful. So this, summon one extra copy, uh, yeah, summon one copy of a friendly minion, overload three mana crystals to upgrade. So it has to be in your hand, and you have to be overloading. And my deck essentially overloads and controls the board until you can slam down Snow Fury Giants for free and basically cast um, Spirit Echo to either get them back or Ancestral Knowledge with a few other things. So it, this on for seven mana looks really bad actually, but if you upgrade it, and then if you upgrade it again, there we go, then it summons three copies of a friendly minion for seven mana. Now that's actually pretty awesome. And overloading isn't that difficult. There's plenty of good uh, control AOE cards uh, in Shaman, particularly two volcanoes is really enough before this goes off. And then you're just playing you know, one Snow Fury Giant, you can keep your other Snow Fury Giants. And yeah, it is essentially weak. The biggest problem I've had with the Snow Fury Giant deck is straight aggro, which I guess you can just put in taunts at the beginning, like Drakari Defender. But even that, sometimes you get deadly shot. Not all the time, but it still happens. And the other big problem is if your Snow Fury Giants die, well, you're kind of... done. You're, you're pretty much done. So this actually I think helps with a problem that I've been having with that deck is that this would allow me to only play one Snow Fury Giant then do this out and by that turn it's usually 10 mana ish so could possibly even Spirit Echo all three of them and just get a massive number of Giants. Hard to deal with at 8 attack and 8 health. Will it be enough to fix what's wrong with that deck? Probably not. Oh well. Could just be a dream for a while. But it's a dream I enjoy having because I yeah, meta decks getting a little tired of. The next card that I am super excited about is Unstable Evolution. Now a lot of people have already said the dream of this and come up with the dream where you uh, blood sail bu buccaneer what any one mana pirate that summons patches and then you unstable evolution just happen to land on something that reduces spell cost and then you can just unstable evolution to oblivion on turn one and gg that's the game very unlikely of happening. Something I like in Shaman right now is not the blanket evolve that a lot of people use. I actually really, 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 really like uh, Death Knight Thrall's uh, hero power because it's kind of a heal to your units. Uh, you evolve them and you heal them up and you change them and you can potentially get that kind of thing, and it gives you some flexibility where Evolve is just one and done across the entire board. And the thing I love about Unstable Evolution is that, I mean, you can use it as many times in a turn or as few times in a turn as you want. You can kind of choose when to start, when to stop, when to start with one minion, when to stop with another minion. So I'm not interested in the amazing one in a highlight reel. OTKs, although those w would be fun. Well, okay, they're not OTKs, but 
that kind of ridiculous turn one 10 mana creature. That would be cool. But that being said, I think this is actually a really interesting flexible card that could be a lot of fun to kind of mess around with. So yeah, this is one of my favorites and I'll be making two of them on launch day if I don't get at least two of them. And the last card that I want to talk about is probably my... I think this card is absolutely nuts. Murmuring Elemental. A 2 mana, 1, one health, 1 attack. Battle Cry. Your next Battle Cry this turn triggers twice. When I talk about flexibility in cards, this is quite possibly the best one. I think this is insane. And this card will be quite possibly a staple. Okay, I'm not going to make predictions. I think this card is just going to be fun to mess around with. It triggers any and every death rattle twice. and Or, I mean, battle cry twice. So, when you play this card, this card can be played with anything. It can be played with Kalamos and heal your hero for a massive, just a mass amount. Like, 24. It can do 12 damage to the face with Kalamos. Um, it can hit twice on the board for a total of 6 AoE to your enemies. Board. That's a lot. Uh, and that's really good to have that kind of board clear. But you can use this card with anything. You could technically use it with Crumble and get two copies of everything on your board. So even if you only have Kalamos and a Murmuring Elemental, you know, you played Kalamos last turn, then you play the Murmuring Elemental, and then you play uh, Grumble, then you get two Kalamoses that cost one. I no, wait. No, you don't. Never mind. Forget that. Forget that. I'm totally wrong. That, okay, it doesn't work with Grumble. Never mind. It's a bad card. But there's a lot of ways that you can use this with a lot of different battle cries. And I think this will be really interesting to see some of the things people come up with. Um, obviously... Evolve Shaman could use this with Doppelgangster and then Evolve, but that's pushing a turn 6 play to a turn 8 play, and that's quite a bit later. However, that being said, five Doppel I mean, three Doppelgangsters plus Evolve was enough to win a lot of games, so five could be even better. Or the other play is that. This can actually work with the Death Knight even, meaning that you get Evolved for two, and then Evolved for two again. And that's a total Evolve of four. That's pretty scary to be building if you get, you know, hard to see when you can actually quite pull this off. This would be a little bit of a dream, because you got to play this, and then Doppelgangster, uh, but maybe Serenite Chain or Serenite Chain Gang. It really depends on the value that you're getting for these double evolves from the Death Knight. But it's still pretty cool. So in general, this expansion looks to be really interesting with a lot of kooky, crazy cards. And so I will be doing a pack opening. I guess it's going to be like 2, 3, 4 a.m. here in Japan. There we go. I already have some packs, but I'll be opening more than 53. That is for sure. I'm going to be spending pretty much whatever gold I have on packs and just opening a whole bunch. So I'll be doing a video of that, but I'll probably be splitting it in two for a certain reason. So with that being said, I hope the expansion brings a lot of new deck archetypes. I hope it brings a lot of crazy new things. And hopefully the meta changes from what it is right now, where this deck is just not fun to play against. Damn you, Highlander. Oh, oh wait, what's this? Oh, what's this? 
Maybe it won't be as bad as we all think it's going to be. Anyway, that's it. Tried to keep this video short. Tons of other great cards, but uh, hopefully we'll get to actually play them and not just talk about them. So, till then, folks, I'm looking forward to opening a lot of card packs.